Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 52 of Hashtag Beer Time. How you doing? How you feeling? What a great time to be alive. Yes, it is a great time to be alive, especially if you're a beer influencer, as they call them on the social media web these days. Do you take photos of beer? Do breweries send you free beer and in exchange you take beautiful photos? Do you tweet about it? Do you write stories about it? Well then this podcast is for you. Our guests are Murray Slater aka the Beer Whisperer and Matthew Hurst and we talk about the rise of beer social media. We try two beers on the show, one from Thailand and the other from Saggy Stone. Highlights from the show include number one, credibility on the internet and the social media platforms. Number two, the difference between influencer and thought leader. And number three, what we all feel is the key to getting started in the world of beer social media. It's a fun show. I really had a good time putting it together and talking about it. And as always, I really appreciate your feedback and your comments. Let me know what you think. Enjoy the show, guys. Cheers. You know what time it is. What's up, beer people? If you heard it on the hashtag beer time, it's true. It must be true. It's true. Uh, it is fact. Please, won't you name one of your beers cart horse? And just do something terrible. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> shit beer. Yeah. Stick your finger in there every now and again. <laughs> Stir it with a yeah. sock. <laughs> every show, it feels like my first show. Every show is a new adventure. We're having some good conversation here, Mr. Troy. Did I make sense there? I think I did. Oh, I love them all. Are we off air? <laughs> I'm going to. It's your new theme opening team. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hashtag Beer Time. This is, I believe, episode 52. Let me get around to introducing our guests. And you have definitely heard of them before. They are, we could say they're regulars on the show. The one, you will <laughs> recognize his voice. He is the Beer Whisperer. He is Mr. Murray Slater of... Beer house only for a few more days, yeah. I believe. But Murray, three weeks. Hello, welcome back. Good to ha- good to be here, T. You, re- you really starting to grow your unemployed beard? I yeah, see. No, it's nice and grizzly. <laughs> nice and grizzly. You get in there. Yeah. Um, Gotta save on the on the razors. You know? Exactly, and soak up all the beer. Yeah. <laughs> Let me welcome our, our the third person, and uh, the second guest, third person in the studio. It's Mr. Matt. He was so popular last week that we thought, flip, we have to get him back. Matt, I think this is the first person or guest that we've invited back two weeks in a row. How do you feel about oh, that? Very honored. Very honored to be here with you guys on this hot day. I haven't had a beer yet, so I don't know why you've been depriving Clearly me. Clearly the audience... I'm at Beer House without beer. It's <laughs> terrible. Clearly uh, the, the people have spoken. They want more intellect on the show. Okay. So when are we getting the next guest on? <laughs> Let's start the show as we always do. With some beer. And Ooh, ah. this is a beer. I showed you guys last week. We, unfortunately, we didn't have time to drink it. This is a Thai beer. Now, right, there's a bit of a story behind this. It's called the Snowy Bison by EST33. Whatever that means, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. It's a... I mean, Matt, you were describing this yeah. can. That's beautiful. Right. That's got a kind of a bear uh, shape that's... Inside the bear is a whole bunch of kind of foresty, snowy-looking uh, landscape. But it tends... Is, does it move? It's no, quite it's trippy, just, to be honest. So I think it's just the light. <laughs> but <laughs> this, this, you, you, would, you would, if you saw this can, you would say, this is, a, this is definitely a, yeah. a craft beer. It's definitely not mainstream. But yeah. anyway, I... It doesn't make you think of Thailand. No, no. It makes you think of like a Colorado or something. Yeah, like Canada or something. Yeah. Yeah, something, Calgary or something like that. But... Um, I was traveling through Thailand on a scooter and I came across this coffee shop and I looked inside and lo and behold was this beer. Now, regular listeners will have heard that my complaint about Thailand was that beer is, craft beer is about 150 rand pints for dollars, that's what, $10, which I suppose you're kind of used to in the States. Uh, But it's still, it's very expensive uh, when you use the rand. But anyway, I came across this beer and it was 80 Bart, which is 40 rand and sure. I thought let me get this this looks like a very interesting craft beer I did some research 
turns out it's not a craft beer. It's made <laughs> by one of the the biggest breweries in Thailand, which is Singer. Um, but but Troy, it says craft on the side there. It that, does take craft. That makes it craft, then. Oh. It's just, it's, and it's all in Thai, so I, I couldn't understand it. So let's drink it. Uh, but the one thing I did want to say is that it is boiling hot outside today. Yes. And when I drank this beer first in Thailand, it was boiling hot. Okay, and it quenched your thirst. And yeah. I always, you know, sure. vice beer for it's me has always been the, the, the red-headed stepchild, the, the forgotten one in the beer industry. It gets a bad rap. But I will say this, this I really, I really enjoy this. So... so you know, with Thai food, you, the ingredients that you use quite a lot. You correct me if I'm wrong, because I know you've just been there and you've been doing some. Way, I've had, I've had, uh, you've just been doing some cooking courses. Yes. Um, is the use of things like lemongrass and lime leaf? Lemongrass, mm. um, lime, mm. uh, not so much coriander mm. or anything like that. So, but uh, we'll cheers, you guys, quickly. Cheers. 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 So cheers. Why, why I say that is because what immediately I picked up on the nose, it resembles something lemongrass. Mm. Mm. But I just thought when I first had this, this was just a well-made beer it was nothing overly exciting nothing it's quite, it's it's quite different but it's perfect for a day like today mm. when it's hot it's definitely got yeah. that wheat character mm. um, it's kind of milky <laughs> it's it looks like milk, yeah. milky it's yeah. very milky well, i did tilt the can side to side as instructed just say, they say on the can the there what do they say there gently tilt the can side to side to rouse the protein rouse and yeast and obviously, it's a high protein beer. So. And ready to see the snow fall. Mm. But I'm, I'm stoked I'm drinking it. I guess it's quite different, but in a, like, not a bad way. I think it, it ends like really nice and attenuated. It's, yeah. it's, very, it's very different from what we've got in the South African market. Yeah. yeah. I think when you think of great vice beers, it's, you think CBC. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. this is. It's not very complete. fruity for a vice. It's, it's very different. It's very. Um, Soft. Yep. I don't know why I think of milk, but it is very. Maybe it's just the complexion that I'm looking it's at. It's kind of really light in the fruit, more in the spice, and it's, mm. it's quite a basic flavor profile. But that's great for, for if you want a session yeah. or quench your thirst. I'm, I'm smashing. Sometimes vice beers are you know a little bit too challenging and you know, too much fruit and too mm. much spice, and you know it's not easy to drink lots of. So this is definitely a sessioning vice beer. Yeah. If there is such a thing. There is not. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could definitely smash a few of these. Yeah. Um, let's move on to a topic of today's discussion, which uh, is something that I've been thinking about. Uh, Murray, I understand you've also been thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the rise of the beer social media. Beer, rise of beer social media. Try and get that right, Troy, at least. And <laughs> I don't know if um, people will remember, I think there was a show earlier in the year, I think it was with... Uh, Steph from Little Wolf or Shay from Hops on Hops Off and we we asked it was right in the beginning of the year and we I asked my guests what they were expecting from 2018 uh, they gave their answers and then they asked they turned it back on me and they said What's, what, what are you expecting one of the things that I uh, saw on the horizon was the emergence of the craft beer fan and we're talking now about uh, people on social media, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. I really thought that people, well, I still believe that people were going to come through with a lot, of, lot more stronger content. So it's kind of what I want to talk about now because I feel that we're in a, in a state of, in the South African industry where there's so much potential and there's so much influence out there. People are really starting to jack it up a notch in terms of content good content and not just good content but accurate content and people are starting to become a bit more credible with their with their with their thinking process yeah. I've spoken for way too long I guys I need your opinions on this let's well I, 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 I'm just jumping in there I mean my interest in this started with um, this topic I've got a I've got a blog that will be published at some stage but it's taken me probably about four months. Um, I haven't got around to actually publishing it, but the premise behind the, the blog was pretty much exactly what you're talking about. And it, was, it was actually, it's titled The Rise of the Influencer. And it was born um, mostly out of my envy, let's call it, um, for not receiving uh, 
uh, free stuff. Um, you, this is a great segue, by the way. Yes. Yeah. And so, yeah, <laughs> I was never, I'm not, still not deemed as an influencer. So influencers generally are the people that are going to be sent free tickets or free, free beer. Uh, free beer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, just for taking pictures of and having a certain amount of followers makes you into something called an influencer. And it's, you know, it's, it's worldwide. It's not just the beer industry. Everybody is using influencer marketing because it's a way to penetrate as many people uh, organically. And, and, Brewers and, use yeah. it uh, so that they, they use other creatives to showcase their brand, yeah. which I think is genius. Yeah. I, I just wonder when that's going to swing, when it, it becomes the other way around. Yeah. So when creatives use the brewers for their brand, oh, yes. um, and it, it, it becomes more than just the uh, pay, not pay to play. Well, it, it does become a bit of a pay mm. to play, but it, it's not just the case of sending someone beer mm. to take a photo of this. Now it becomes. Uh, there's actual credibility behind that. There's a bit of a following. Another marketing. Um, uh, yeah, but it just it turns a bit. Mm. Do you think that's going to happen? Do you understand? I understand what you're saying. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. I think, you know, the power of uh, one company using multiple different influences is, is, is a lot more, uh, gets you a lot more coverage. But it, it wasn't just the envy of, of me not receiving uh, beers, but it was also seeing certain people that have now become uh, beer influencers. Um, say and write things on online about beers, uh, which were kind of in, uh, not really well informed. Okay. Um, so the premise, the premise of my blog is just to speak at the difference between an influencer, who's just someone who takes pictures and has lots of followers, yes, um, and doesn't really understand the product that they're selling. They're not really invested or studied up on it. Uh, versus what you call thought leadership. So I think there's a big difference there, and I think if more people in the beer industry took the side of thought leadership rather than just being an influencer. So they invested time in their own um, upskilling and studying of the actual product they're talking about. So there's plenty of online beer courses you can take. There's Cicero and there's BJCP classes. It, it comes down to yeah. credibility. Mm. Um, but I think also it's, it's very subjective in terms of who's the best, uh, in terms of who's, the most, who's got the most gold medals or BJCP points. Yeah, I don't uh, think it's about that. I think it's about actually being able to talk about what you're tasting and being able to describe it properly. And, sure. And you know, if you if you like going on social media and taking pictures of beers which have quite clear um, issues, or faults, yeah. and talking them up and saying how wonderful they are. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's an issue for me because people are going to go, oh well, that guy's a beer uh, expert, but he's not. Yeah. Well, that girl. Um, I um, think that's a problem, yeah. but I also think you have to understand your market. So. If you're going to just kind of cater to the mass market, mm -hmm. then you don't want to get too technical, yes. start talking about mouthfeel yeah. and head retention. And yeah. that puts a lot of people off yes. because it's quite intimidating. Yes. So you can keep it kind of light and fluffy, for yes. lack of a better term, if yeah. you're going mass market. So you have to understand your market. Mm -hmm. And I think I think the real key is to choose. Do you want to be a thought leader or do you want to be an influencer? Yeah. I think, all, I think all influencers, regardless of whether they're doing fluffy content or yeah. serious beer nerd stuff, should understand the product they're doing. So uh, and, yeah. the investment into understanding the product you're talking about is important. And I'm all for it. I don't think you, everybody I needs to be this philosopher of beer. Yeah. But I think if you're going to take pictures of beer, at least you know understand the difference between an ale and a lager. Let's start with that. I agree. I, I, think, I yeah. think that goes for all things. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you're coming in with the criticism or trying to be objective in a, let's say, for example, um, a review of a beer, you know, it's you're not going to be Charlie Bamforth in, in analyzing it, but yeah. you, I think, you know, when I give a review or critique yeah. online, you know, I, I try and make it objective and look. You put it as humbly as possible, like oh, maybe it's missing a few things here and there, but there's. Keep it positive. I think no matter who you are, you, there's always that level of trying to be better or get more, get more credibility under the belt. Yeah. Um, so, so I just want to read this quickly because it's, it's not actually my own writing, but it's definitely something that's informed my blog, which was uh, thought leaders are people who care about their niche and industry for real and enough uh, to well, take some time to invest uh, in becoming experts. Uh, they work in the industry, they learn all the time, they make it a point to generate quality and authentic content, not for their own profit or someone else's profit, but for the purpose of educating others. So it's community building. Yeah. Um, you're not necessarily getting into it because you, you know, you're going to turn a fortune. It's about being you know, uh, knowledgeable um, and caring about the industry and helping the community grow. And I think that's a wonderful way of looking at it. And I think it's a difference out. also between the beer snob and a beer fan. The yes. beer fan will kind of yeah. edge that community along. Mm. Um, and uh, Sorry, I think there yeah. are a lot maybe not a lot of people, but quite a few people that do get into it 
because they see other people getting free stuff. Yeah. And then they just want to get free stuff, so they kind of try post more. And that's where it also comes into education and yeah. knowing your product. Well, I mean, the amount of content you generate with one free beer, I mean, it's not one free, because they probably give away, what, 30, 40 around the right, country. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the amount of content that that generates over a period of time is is is, is fantastic. It's a massive spike. But surely, as a business slash brewery, you'd want to know. Okay, I sent these fifty packs out for argument's sake. Mm. How much did I generate? You know, this person. That's did the thing. This, it's this so hard to that. measure that. Are they doing metrics? So hard to measure that. How could you? You're talking about analytical data, like yeah. that uh, is the one return, return, of, return on in, in, yeah. return on investment. It's not measurable. Yeah. But most advertising. I mean, uh, yes. Magazines, traditional style of advertising, you know, the radio, the TV, um, they have viewership. So you, you yeah. get a number at least. How many of them go out and buy your product afterwards? It's difficult to tell. Uh, but influencing is extremely hard to, to measure. Yeah, I guess the best way is engagement, but yeah. that's also not, but it's it's not directly tied to the bottom line. But the return on investment is incredible because literally you're talking about one beer for something that, you know, if you're advertising on radio or, or traditional uh, magazines and, yeah. and newspapers. You're paying an absolute fortune. It's actually sure. scary how much you have to pay for one advert. Where you're literally getting this for one beer, two yeah. beers, and maybe some nice flowers. That's the one that hurts you. That's the one that hurts you. That's the one that really. When everyone got little, uh, everyone flowers. See, yeah, everyone has seen flowers. I don't get any. Everything else I turned a blind eye to, but mm. not receiving flowers was. <laughs> What, what Speaking of me? which, let's <laughs> wait till let's, Valentine's Day. Yes, let's let's crack open the next beer, which was. Ooh. Uh, gifted to me as, as a thought leader I, I'd like to nice. imagine <laughs> not as an influencer got those two categories now okay. you know just a side note I, I reached a thousand followers on Instagram the other day which oh, was man. I was pretty stoked but thank you organic okay. organic. I'd like to say yeah, I hope so uh, it's now dipped to below 990 yeah. I think what happens people see that you reach like a thousand <laughs> and then they just start like unfollowing you. Did you, did you, did you, did you, did you uh, run a competition to get to a thousand or something? No, Sometimes that happens. People just get on the, on, no. on, on the following. I did post a lot of um, non beer related pictures. So I'm thinking that's maybe in why. Thailand. In Thailand. So, so, and me having a good time. How about a, uh, a question for you? Um, beer, hashtag beer Let time. me open this. This is the Weissen Bock, yeah. the new brewer small batch by Saggy Stone. Uh, Hand delivered. By the bro, hand delivered. Mm. Personal touch would you, always a good thing. Would JC wouldn't do that from Devil's Peak, would he? <laughs> no, I don't know. Why not? It's too busy brewing at the moment. Um, Your question, sir. My question to you is: This is obviously you say gifted to you. Does that change the way that you talk about it? Uh, um, because I think there's there's definitely ethical really, yeah. uh, questions to be asked about. How do you review a beer that's given to you free? To a certain point. Yeah. Sorry, is that your question? Yes. Can answer it. Go to a certain that. point, if it is. Heavily infected. If there's a major s- soundness or a metallic, soapy, yeah. whatever catty kind of vibe, Baby I will. I don't think it's my job to heavily criticize it and put it down. I think I would um, refrain from drinking further and giving any feedback, and I just go straight to the bro. Even yeah. if so, I, you take it offline basically. I'd still talk about it right here, right now, but I just tell. I'd give an honest feedback. Say, I think this bro needs to maybe inspect this. So, so, um, I didn't receive one of these cans and I saw everybody else doing it. I did receive. Uh, the you see, record. there we go. Uh, but, then, but then I was um, asked whether I would be listing it at the beer house. And I said, well, I need to taste it first. So then Liam came and dropped it off. And I had two over the weekend. And I must say, I'm really impressed with this beer. Mm. I absolutely mm. agree. I reviewed it yesterday. Mm. Um, I did read your thoughts on it beforehand. Oh, yeah. And, and what that did you probably think? also Influence what influences you yeah. me. Um, I've just influenced I like an influencer. <laughs> also, I'm like the influencer puppet master. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I also thought it's incredible. I like the bitterness that comes through because when I read more banana esters, which they were going for, I was very concerned because I don't really like a vice that strays towards the banana side of mm, things. I no. like the clove banana balance. Mm. And when they kept talking about banana esters, I was very concerned. But that carbonation and the bitterness that comes through really balances the banana out. Mm-hmm. I thought it was, yeah. I mean, if and that's also bitterness from the high ABV, isn't it? Yeah. Not, it's not just a uh, hops. That's the other beer whisperer from Beer House. He's just popping in. I'm coming now, dude. Hi, Bevan. Okay. Um, so, so my thoughts on this beer was if you're tired of a vice beer, but you still want to have that kind of... Because wheat is a very specific mouthfeel for me. Mm. Yes. So you Fluffy. still want that mouthfeel of wheat, but you're tired of kind of the very fruity vice beers. This is a good one to try, so and it's nice high alcohol, 6.7%. It's like Saggy Stone uh, Weizenbock, so a bock being a strong vice. Yes. Um, Number category 10C, that's 
And it sure. might be the first brewery in South Africa to actually put the BJCP yeah. guidelines on, on the label. Yeah, that's a nice start. A very sexy can. What it reminds me of is a Mercedes, you know, like a racing yeah. uh, Formula yeah. One. It's very kind very of silver with uh, very keen black um, writing. It's, it's, mm. It looks really good. Yeah. I like it. Well, Are they the, the first brewery to do a bison bob? Mm. I, I wouldn't be able to answer that. It's one of the first I'm I've pretty been. sure. I mean, besides uh, limited I'm, edition tap. I, I'm going to stick my neck out and say that I might have seen one of the old school Jobo brewers make one before. Okay. Um, I mean, at festivals and stuff, but definitely nothing that's available commercially yeah. at the moment. No. Um, but Murray, going back to your question, um, how would I review this now? If I actually review this now, and I, I will review it honestly, and I will say that it is delicious. Mm. Um, if it's, but to give a different example, if it's a beer that just kind of passes and it's maybe a five or six out of ten, I will, I will call it a five or six out of ten um, because I think that's. It's, it's rather better to be honest from my side in the long term yeah. uh, than to lose credibility yeah. for the short game. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's the one thing that I'll, I will never stray from. Yeah. The thing is, beer is a very subjective thing. So I, when I try to do my beer reviews, I try and stay very objective. So you kind, of, you, kind saying, of, you kind of go by yeah. BJCP stocks. That's the intention of BJCP. To try and make something that's incredibly subjective more... I try and just describe Objective. what I'm experiencing yes. and then let yeah. people make up their own minds. Because if you say, oh, it's way too fruity, yeah. what and does someone that else mean drinks someone, it yeah. and go, oh, no, so, I don't think so, it's fruity so, enough. So for me, I usually link it to, uh, like I did with this beer, and I, I mentioned it on on social media, that it reminded me of a boozy banoffee pie. Yeah. And I do try to link it to other, like, um, uh, not sensations, but other Experience. other f- experiences, food, uh, whether it's food or other booze. Um, you know, when you get a real nice um, sherry uh, nose on a, on a barrel-aged um, beer, yeah. it re- always reminds me of Pedro Hemin and Sherry. Mm. So I like to link it to those, and so that maybe uh, is good in a way that people can that don't know beer can go, well, I know what a banoffee pie is. Maybe yes. I want to try that beer. Or yeah. I really like sweet sherry. I'm going to like those kind of beers. So I try to go down that route. But at the same time, you have to describe what you're tasting, I think, sure. and try to be as objective as possible. Yeah, and but to describe yeah. it without making a judgment to say this is too mm. this or not enough of that. You yes. have to let people make up their own minds by, like you say, this mm. reminds me of Benoffee Pie and they go, oh, I want to go try that. And then mm. they might say, I don't taste that at all. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the conversation back towards um, the subject of hand of bare social media. And we, we did, we, but it was a great link there where we, we were speaking about subjectivity and, and you know, your personal opinion on a, on a beer. And linking it with credibility, um, when you Google bear social media, the number one hit, the first thing that comes up is untapped. Yeah. And for those of you not in the know, untapped is, a, I would say it's the number one bear app um, in the world. And it's for uh, bear reviews, bear reviews in a nutshell. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but you have like uh, bars and beers and you give a star rating. The question to you guys is, that is a mixture of subjective, objective, um, credible and non-credible users. Mm. Well, yeah, it's always going to be subjective because it's where they are, what they're doing, sure. how their day has been. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are some people who are trying to give a very global or a very um, general, generalized um, review or critique. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, what are your guys' opinions in something like the, the untapped app? Do you think it's a, I think, I it's a benefit? It, it absolutely is. And I think it's, uh, I, funny enough, wrote uh, uh, an untapped, um, not untapped, but an untapped magazine, which is a, obviously <laughs> a local South African beer magazine, about, uh, it was actually started off with um, the question of rate beer versus untapped. It was yes. quite cool to see. I remember that, yes. And how, you know, rate beer is very much for the beer nerds, and where yeah. untapped the one that's, at the end of the day, is going to succeed because it's accessible and it's available to everybody. Um, so what, what it is, is a, it's an instinct, it's, a, it's an innate human uh, want to have to grade their experiences. Yeah. And what that becomes is we become the, the kind of fourth estate. So we're actually the guardians of beer, we're the current guardians um, of the world's oldest and greatest beverage. And part of that guardianship is that we should be, you know, rating and going out there. And what that does is it kind of um, gives, you know, untapped a great platform. Um, for lots of different people to come together and rate a beer, um, which I think is a fantastic way 
of it's never perfect. There's no perfect system. Of we're talking about something subjective. Yeah. But I think and it gives a great uh, little way of actually seeing. I mean, a lot of the time it's very credible when you look at an uh, untapped rating and you, and, you, and you look at the beer that they are rating. Well, do you think there should be a user credibility rating? No, just I, like how, just how like would Uber. You design that. Though? Well, so I mean, with Uber, you with the Uber, you could the Uber can get a rating Maybe. and the the passenger gets a rating. Sure. So if the beer can get a rating, surely the user should get a rating. But How who's you, rating the user? That's well, question. it depends. You need to tick a few boxes. Do you, and this is just thumb sucking, do you own a brewery? Do you have a BJCP qualification? What level are you? Uh, have you taken any form of uh, brewing scholarship? Um, how many beers do you think you've tried? Um, for example. Yeah, I think, I think the problem with that is it would chase a lot of people away because of the inherent usability of the app. They just want to kind of rate and go... But, so, on the other I hand... I think the admin of that would be insurmountable. You reckon? That's my big word for that. Insurmountable. No. You come with your big words. No, I'm what you could What you could do, which is a little bit, once again, challenging. And I think the nice thing about things like Untapped is that it's accessibility is available to everybody. Uh, Varying all, degrees all of levels. education. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's very important. I think yeah. what you could potentially do, Troy, to answer your question is, you know, if someone has a sister on all BJCP, do, 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 do their ratings weight more um, than your average Joe? Uh, but then you're kind of pushing beer into kind of snobbery and elitism, really. And the issue with that is the Cicerones and the BJCP judges are what percentage of the beer drinking market? One to five percent, maybe? Yeah. Mm. So now you're weighting the lesser population much higher than yeah. most people that are going to drink that beer. Is that fair? I don't, I don't think that I it is. I kind of feel that even though if you were to introduce some form of credibility, it would, there would be some form of appreciation for what that person is speaking about. So I'm, not, I, I'm not a big Twitter user. But when yeah. you see a blue tick next to someone's name, you would kind of... What does that even mean? The blue tick. Yeah. It means they got over a certain amount of followers. Oh, right. I, I stand to be corrected. Um, and that they... They are very fine. Maybe within their field, again, mm. this is a very general statement, maybe within their field they know what they're talking about. Um, but I'm just trying to compare it to the untapped thing. I think if you started off with a one tick system or something like that it might or gold star matthew hurst five gold stars i'm going to listen to what he want, he has to say but what if your palate's completely different to his and that's the, this whole subjective thing is kind of... mm. that's the issue so then you go oh it's rated at five stars i'm going to drink that and you hate it what do you yeah how do you then you go off on tap because you can't trust their ratings anymore so i'm just not going keeping... to trust i'm not going to trust matthew hurst's palate then yeah but if you go through five or ten of those yeah so I think keeping everyone the same for all the pros and cons of it all, I think is the easiest and the best system. And you'll kind of figure your way out as you go along. Because it, it's always a double-edged coin. There's always going to be people you don't agree with, beers you like that other people don't like. And you just I, I, I like your mixed metaphor. Right? Double-edged sword. Double-edged sword. Double-edged uh, two sides of the coin. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love well, the, the, the coin. The coin. Yeah. yeah, the coin's gonna catch you. I, I, I've, I've, I've got a check. Fr- I've got a check friend who does it all the time, and I love it. It's like yeah. perfect. My favorite one is um, the the final nail on the camel's back. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I call his name's Boris, and I call them Borisisms because he like nails them the whole time. Yeah, amazing. And he's not doing it on purpose. It's just hilarious. I've actually also got a friend like this. Yeah. I'm gonna start recording them. <laughs> Yeah. I publish a book called... I, I, used to yeah. get, I used to get teased about that quite a bit. Oh, did you do it as well? Mm. Speaking of publishing books. <laughs> speaking of publishing books, great, great segue. Definitely yeah. no money in um, But when you Google uh, top beer influencers yes. online, yes. the majority of them, and I say a good, I saw a good eight or nine out of ten, were all authors. Wow. And I'm Who's talking the top about... One? Uh, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some some that came up were Good Beer Hunting, Brewers Network, Ray Daniels, Charlie Papazian. Mm. So, um, I th- I think it's it's not because they've written a book that they've become yeah. experts. It's the other way around. They're experts in, in writing a book's almost like a branding exercise. Mm. Uh, I know that these guys. I mean, I've heard, especially in South Africa. I don't know what it's like in the UK. There might be some money in here. But yeah, it's very much a branding exercise to launch a book. Sure. Because uh, the branding houses just take most of the money. 
Yes. So it's about giving yourself relevancy in your industry. Mm. If you publish a book, you suddenly become, you know, in, in everybody's mind, a, a genuine article expert. Yes. Um, but you're not going to, you know, pay your, your bills with it. No. But it does give you future business and, and, and it puts you on that pedestal as an expert. And, and I think this is, this is a great, we're wrapping up the show correct. I mean, I'm so chuffed. But, you know, it, it brings along the example of Greg and Carl from Bear Country who are um, launching a book early next year. Mm-hmm. And it's that relevancy and staying relevant within the market yeah. and, you know, having some, doing something that's um, actually doing something. You know, and something I'll, physical, I'll, something physical, whether it's physical, something Creative. tangible. Yeah. But it's that, it's what I love about the uh, thought leaders or influencers. Mm-hmm. If we can box them into one kind of category, we can. It's the beer social media category, and what I love about it is that we all are connected. We all see each other, uh, whether it's on social media or in beer events, and because one person is either publishing a book, cookbook, or, you know, making videos or doing podcasts or uh, Lucy and Sean are doing the African brew, uh, brew cup, African beer cup. Yeah. There's this constant drive to producing something, to doing something. And I think that's great for our industry because it, we feed off it. Because we always see, okay, cool, what's Matthew doing now? He's doing this, um, making a beer here. Oh, I need to make a beer here. Um, Mike's doing this from this place. Shay's doing, taking these photos at this place. I want to do this kind of stuff. And so it kind of puts you in a position as a thought leader or influencer to be like, I need to get on it. I need to up my game. What am I going to be bringing into the community? Um, do you guys feel that as well? Do you, is, is that the energy that you feel? I think there is an energy there, but I think what's very important is for us to support those people that are doing those things and putting themselves out there and doing tangible things, I guess, because otherwise it's going to stop and then everyone's going to moan about how there's no craft beer related books or, you know, that sort of thing. So if you don't support the people, it's going to stop and then everyone's going to cry. So it's very important to support people you respect and think are pushing the industry forward, whether it's brewers or influencers or thought leaders or whoever. Mm. to support them to make sure that that carries on going and carries on growing and helps the industry carry on. Well, I will say this. I am buying Greg and Carl's book. I think it's coming yeah. out around Valentine's Day, so my wife is going to get a wonderful gift. Uh, so I will, I will support them. Yeah. So the point is that too many people hope that the industry grows, but they don't always support the people that are helping the industry grow. So it's I think that's not... very important. It's not what your industry can do for you, but what you can do for your industry. Mm-hmm. I have nothing to add to that. Like that. Very wise saying. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, no, it's, 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 there's incredible energy and buzz in, 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 in this industry and community we work in. I think that's because beer is such a fun product and everybody yeah. likes to explore it. And everybody has that moment of clarity when they first had a beer that they really like, liked. Like, this is a great beer. And everyone remembers that moment, and, and then subsequently everybody's become an evangelist for this amazing product that's out there. And I think it's because of the, the tyranny of the bland, let's call it, that's uh, our, <laughs> our, our hot country lagers mm. that kind of dominated the world from, from the 1950s onwards. Um, yeah, it was a tyranny, and I think a lot of people um, didn't really uh, you know, explore beer until recently, and I think it, yeah. that's created all the energy. It's, um, it's a fantastic industry to be in, and I think everybody's kind of you know, not for um, you know money or glory, but just because they want to see this community grow and grow mm. in a good space. And I said it before in this podcast, and I've, I said it the other day, and it really dawned upon me. You know, this beverage has been around for what seven thousand years. Yeah, um, and we're just you know a tiny speck in the in the sand of the people that are actually enjoying this beverage. We're going through a nice little period, a revolution, mm. which is exciting to be part of. Thank, yeah. thank goodness I wasn't born in, in the nineteen you know fifties. <laughs> Because I'd be drinking bland lager my whole life. Yeah. But we're the current guardians, and it's us to contribute to it. Because, you know, when, when you know, um, it's getting very dramatic. But when we close our eyes, as long as beer is in a better state than it was before we opened our eyes, yes. then we're doing our job. And I think we need to just muck in and do as much as we can. Yeah. And bring new people into the fold. So I think yes. a lot of people get a bit too I, serious I'm, about beer. Yeah. It's, it's so, okay if people want to carry on drinking their mass market lagers, but... 
try get them to try something new, ask them why they won't, give them some of your maybe even special beer that you would normally share with them to try. Bring them into that fold because you never know when you'll turn someone into a craft beer evangelist. Mm. So I think we, we will get very The community um, needs to definitely become more inclusive. We, yes. we, we've, we've, we've hit that word a few times and I'm going to finish with it, evangelist. Yeah. I think you need to almost start there if you're going to start anywhere, if you want to have any effect in the, in the community, in any community you want. But with craft beer, whether you want to become an influencer hmm. or a thought leader. There's a word that combines both. I mean, you've just used it, evangelist. evangelist. Yeah. yeah, and that's um, maybe something to think about and to take forward. Mm. I think that's a great way to end. Did you guys enjoy the beers? Lovely. Fantastic. That's a perfect day for it's, spice it's, beers. I'm sweating. Very, very those those spice beers were yeah. perfect. Um, thank you for that. Matt, thank you for being on the show. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. Lovely to be um, back. And Mr. Murray? Yeah, great. Good to be luck on uh, for nice. your last few days at Beer House. Last few days, last few weeks. It's not that great, but yeah, it's thank you. It's good days. It's going to go quickly. It will go quickly, yeah. But then maybe we'll have a podcast uh, soon, and we can we can chat about we what's can, next for the Beer House. Farewell can, party. party. Uh, a farewell party. Oh, that yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, speaking of parties, um, we've got a party on Wednesday at Beer House. It's yes, the, meet the brewers. But it's all sold out. All sold out. But there's a Joburg one. There's also a Joburg one on the thirtieth. And is that there's still tickets for that? There's still tickets for that. But so, this is the wild side meet the brewers. So all the beers are, uh, you know, wild style uh, fermented beers. Yes, um, please. It's really exciting. It's actually fantastic that it's going to be my last one. Uh, we started off doing uh, lagers and cheese, I think, uh, back in the <laughs> Wow, okay. And now, now, we're doing, now we're doing wild fermented beers and gourmet foods. So great you can see the, end, the, the evolution. Yeah. Well, Introduce, introducing something crazy again to, to I can't wait it. and yeah, I'd encourage you guys to get your tickets if you haven't got them yet for the Joburg leg cool guys that's a great way to end thank you very much again Goodbye. and to all the listeners see you soon ciao ciao ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for listening to the show one last thing before you take off I've created a Patreon account what is Patreon Patreon is a website dedicated to artists creating content and it gives them a platform to be able to get paid for their content. So no pressure to you guys, to my friends and my fans, but this kind of thing does help me to continue to grow and to continue to give you good content and to actually take this brand and what I'm doing to the next level and I've got so many plans that I'm so excited to bring to you so if you have a few minutes and if you have an extra buck to spare I'd really appreciate you just going checking it out but you can go check it out at patreon and just type in uh, hashtag beer time and you'll see something there I really appreciate it thank you Thanks for listening, guys and girls. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Just search for hashtag beer time. That's hashtag beer time written out in full. Hope you enjoyed the show, and check you next time. Cheers.